As always, it's so nice to see the congregation of the Lord gathered here this morning. A very special welcome to those joining us online uh, as well. Uh, we greet you in the name of the Lord. And uh, we always say, if you're around Kuala Lumpur area, uh, in the heart of the city, come and visit us here um, at Kuala Lumpur. Uh, a very special welcome today uh, to Reverend Zadok, the moderator of the English-speaking presbytery. And his family is also here as well. So... I think Oksana is here, and, um, and we have uh, Natasha and Ishing and uh, Brian and Hannah as well sitting over there. So they come all the way from Ipoh. So uh, church, if you please, you give them a warm and a welcome. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, just one announcement this morning. Um, can we have it on screen? So this coming Thursday is the community prayer. It's uh, online. Um, we would like to pray together as a church. So we'd like to invite as many people who can join uh, these community prayers online. So it's on screen. Uh, details also available on the website. Okay. Now, let us commit the time to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let us have the call to worship. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. Among the gods, there is none like you. Lord, no deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. I will praise you, Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name. Let's pray. O oh Lord our God, thank you for the manifold blessings you have given us and the privilege to call you our Heavenly Father. Please free our minds this morning from that which holds us back so that with one voice and heart we can give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Amen. Now let us worship. Joy to honor you. 
after which uh, we'll say the prayer of confession together. <coughs> Let us pray together. Almighty God, how great is your wisdom, power, and love. By your word, you brought all creation to life. By your grace, you sent our Lord Jesus for our salvation. In Christ, yes. we have peace with you, as well so as promise the promise of eternal Lord. life. Forgive us, yes. O Lord, how we tend to glorify ourselves than to glorify you. How we forget your goodness and grace when things go well yet blame you when things do not. Renew a right spirit within us. Strengthen our resolve to offer our minds and bodies to you as a living sacrifice. Give us perseverance in every good work. To you alone be glory forever. Amen. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. And therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven here and truly believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we are forgiven. As a forgiven and redeemed people, let us now pass the peace of Christ to one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. the moment the Sunday school kids have been waiting for, um, you can go and join your classes, Sunday school kids. We continue our worship with the next song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Oh, 
taken from Romans chapter 11 verses 33 to chapter 12 verse 2. Romans chapter 11 verses 33 to chapter 12 verse 2 and found on the page 1137 in the Pew Bible. Page 1137. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgment and his path beyond tracing out. Who, are, who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Chapter 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good perfect and pleasing will. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's my pleasure to once again welcome our very dear friend, uh, Reverend Zadok, the present moderator of the English-speaking Presbytery. He's presently serving uh, at the St. Andrew's Community Church in uh, Ipoh. Prior to that, uh, he was serving at the Garija Presbyterian Port Distant as well. Um, he's married to his wife, Oksana, and they are blessed with three children, um, Natasha, Hannah, and Brian, seated back there. He is passionate, uh, he tells me, about seeing the body of Christ, guarding the unity of the Spirit, and flourishing in God's kingdom. So without further ado, please welcome Reverend Zato.
Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, it's indeed a privilege to be here this morning, uh, attending the morning worship service at 8.30. Uh, that was a solemn gathering. And uh, 11 o'clock, it's a solemn contemporary gathering, all right? Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's uh, a different experience. But uh, we thank the Lord uh, uh, that... The Lord allow us to express our worship in different ways, right? Some are very quiet, some are very expressive, uh, some can be very loud and noisy, but whatever it is, the Lord, uh, that we can express something uh, that comes from our hearts, right? Uh, and uh, that we make sure that it comes from our heart to Him, all right? Not for others. Let us pray as we go into the Word of God. Gracious Father, we thank you for gathering us here in your presence. We thank you for the written Word of God that we all have in our hands. And your Word is alive. You speak to us as we meditate on your word. Your word brings life. Your word brings changes into our lives. It encourages us, it motivates us, and at the same time, it also corrects us. So Lord, speak to us. May our ears be open to your voice alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For those of you who are hearing for the second time, please bear. <laughs> All right? And uh, yeah, I hope and pray that the Lord will continue to speak to you as you hear this message. Uh, I've seen uh, people uh, desiring to have something different. And uh, some prefer to have a new look of themselves, right? And one of the common things I've seen people doing is the facelift. <laughs> oh, you all understand that, huh? All right. <laughs> okay, because... Maybe we are bored with the way we are looking and then we want to change. A new look. Not only face, but even our houses, right? We are bored with the way it looked the old way. Uh, we want to give a, a new look for our houses. And uh, we know to have these changes, uh, there's a lot of work involved. There's a cost involved. And, uh, and we are willing to pay the price. We are willing to go through the pain. Yeah? Some of us don't like a messy house. But when a renovation is going on, no choice. It's going to be messy. you got to go through it so that in the end you'll get a good product. Something very nice. And, uh, and after going through the procedures, right? so that you can have this new look. Uh, surely you, you want to see the difference, right? You paid so much of money, spend a lot of time, and after the work is over, when you look at it, you want to see the difference, the change. Uh, how you wanted it to look, how you have envisioned, how you envisioned your house to be. That's how you want to see it. But then, what will be your response if you did not get the result that you expected? You already spent your money, spent time, you are patient with the work, went through the pain, but in the end, you see, oops, that's not what I wanted. It's something different. What will be your 
reaction or what will be your response? We read a passage being read from Romans 13, uh, 11, the last part of it, and the first few verses from chapter 12. Uh, Romans can be a very popular book among the theologians. A lot of doctrines and the foundational uh, for theology, who God is, what God has done. But I can't bring you through the book of Romans now. You may go back a few weeks later. But then generally, reading uh, through the book of Romans, we, we read of the blessings that have come to us through our Lord Jesus Christ, how God has blessed us. Uh, particularly in the way he extended his mercy to all. And... Uh, and reading chapter 11, verse 33, uh, we see Paul is uh, trying to open the eyes of the believers to see the depth of the riches, both the wisdom and the knowledge of God, which were displayed from the beginning of the world and also how it was displayed in Jesus. And that's the foundation that he has laid, right, from 1 to 11 uh, so that we know where it's coming from, what God has done, what he has made available for us, how he's at work, all these things has, has been done. So he, he, he wants us to look at that. How his wisdom and knowledge displayed at the creation of the world. How he made it. The way he handled the fallen man. And uh, reading the book of Genesis, the way he called Abraham to create a nation for himself is all connected to now where we are heading, what he wants to see. Right? He called Abraham to create a nation for himself. And his intention was through him he wants to bless all nations. That's the plan. And, he's, and we see his wisdom and knowledge being displayed in the way he, he guided his people, the nation of Israel, with his love and the way he gave them instruction, corrected them, getting them back on line, on track. He was heading towards something. And not only that, out of that nation, he prepared the way for the seed to bring forth the Messiah who was to be the way, the truth, and the life for the whole world. Not just a group of them, but for the whole world. And today, the same God, through his wisdom, have provided a way for the whole world so that they can turn to him reach out to him to receive that mercy and grace. And Paul says, wow, look at the way how he has worked. Wow, he's so wise. And today, we too have now become the recipients of that mercy and grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All praise and honor to him alone. Maybe you can say, praise the Lord. We have come to know him. And in the display of his wisdom and knowledge in history, God was actually preparing a way to usher in his kingdom, the kingdom of God. Yeah, we need to understand. It's not just poof, like a magic. Something happened now and we are doing. No, God was at work from the beginning. His wisdom is unfolding. And he's preparing a way to usher in his kingdom, as we call it as the kingdom of God. Though we see there's God's history evolving around the Jewish nation at the time, but it 
was planned for a purpose, heading somewhere, heading somewhere. A nation through whom the Redeemer would come to redeem the whole world and establish his kingdom. Today, we understand that the people of his kingdom are those who have become righteous in Christ Jesus and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because of their faith in Jesus. They are the one who have become the, become part of the kingdom of God. Now, looking at the teachings of Jesus, we understand that in this kingdom, God's people were destined to flourish. There must be something good, right? We were singing this song. Uh, we, we can sing of His goodness forever, right? His faithfulness. Yeah, all this goodness are something that we are to experience that is going to cause us to flourish. So as God's people, we were destined to flourish. Not as what the world thing as flourishing, but God has His own way. God has His own plans. Uh, God has His own definition for flourishing. We see it in the teachings of Jesus. Jesus, in, in the Beatitudes, He says, Blessed are those, happy are those. There's some kind of flourishing there. God's people were destined to grow. They're supposed to be growing. Someone asked uh, in my conversation, we were also talking about it. Is it uh, why you believe in Jesus? <laughs> why you become a Christian? <laughs> Some would very happily say, I want to go to heaven. If that's the answer you have, I feel very sorry for you. <laughs> You're going to miss a lot of things if that's the answer. It's not just because of going to heaven. God has a plan. He's working out something. So we, as God's people, we are destined to grow. God's people were destined to experience transformation in their lives. It's not that I have received Christ and then, okay, I'm so glad I'm going on my, on my way to heaven. No, there are some things that need to happen in our lives, right? Destined to grow, destined to experience transformation in their lives. And we see all these things are in line with the Great Commission, we, where we are to make disciples of all nations, that's not only the job, <laughs> all right? Hey, come accept Christ. And no, no. There are other things that Jesus, the, the very important thing there is, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Because there is growth, there is change. Some things have to be different. So when Paul ponders upon the work of God, he can't help but marvel to, uh, to add the, dis uh, the, the display of his wisdom and knowledge. Right? Hold the depth of the riches. Wow. Romans 11, 33. But then we heard the passage being read. It's not just chapter 11, but it goes to chapter 12. Right? Which begins with, therefore, <laughs> therefore. There are a lot of things that we can marvel at. The finished work of Christ, the love of God. We are very, you know, very appreciative of those things. But then we have this chapter 12 to bring us to the reality, right? Because one should not be just at the place of marveling at His work, God's work, His handiwork, His finished work. We are not just supposed to be there uh, 
just marveling this this work I've done. But then we have to start pondering what actually he desired to see, why he went through this process, why he did all these things. It's like looking at the cross and saying, thank you, God, for dying on the cross. Thank you for the love that you have shown to us. Yes, we are grateful. But then we got to move beyond that. Move beyond that. Why? What is that he wants to see in us? Why is he doing all these things? We know Jesus is building something. He's building the church. He's building the church. Upon the confession of Peter, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church. I will thank God Jesus said it. I will build my church, not any man. If any man said it, I'll be shaken by right now. <laughs> I have no confidence. But because Jesus said it, I know he will finish the work. So he said it, I will be, build, build my church. Matthew 16, 18. And looking at the teachings of Jesus and him saying that he is building his church, can we see God creating a family that the world cannot create. Can we see God creating a family? We call it God's family. The world cannot create it, but God is creating it. Today, because of our faith in Jesus, we are all part of that family. Maybe we can say, praise the Lord. Yes. Because our lives are in Christ, connected to Christ. We are the blessed ones who are to experience God-given new life, right? I give you life, new life, abundant life, everlasting life. It's not just we are waiting to die. <laughs> the life is now. We are blessed. We are the new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. We are. We are. Forgiven. And now being transformed. Forgiven. And now being transformed. Like it or not, we are, we are part of God's big project. I'm happy to be part of his project. <laughs> yeah? Where the world is supposed to see the glory of God as he creates something beautiful out of ashes. That's why he paid the price. He did all these things in the past. Today, he can create something beautiful. He wants the world to know that we are his people. Yeah, he called people out because he said, I want you to be my people. My people. And God wants the world to know these are my people. Will there be a difference between the people of the world and his people? Surely, it will be. And Romans eleven thirty six talks about of him, through him, to him are all things, to him be glory forever and ever. So everything is done, everything uh, is being done, it is for the glory of God. No one's glory is not for the glory of the denomination or the church or whatever it is. It is all for the glory of the Lord, where we also define that to be our chief purpose.
purpose. That is to glorify God and God alone. Now, when we are come to this question, we are, we, we know that we are here and we are to glorify God. Then the question is, what is it to glorify God in all things? Do we know what is it to glorify God in all things? How? I've heard people praying, Lord, we glorify you. <laughs> Lord, we glorify you. It's like, uh, what is that? What are you doing <laughs> to glorify his name? One area of all things where God can be glorified, by which he can be glorified, is our transformed life. Our transformed life. That's where we come into chapter 12, verses 1, 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. My brothers and sisters, today, God's wisdom and love have paved a way that can channel the blessings of His mercy and grace into our lives. Yes, the work was done, finished. We just celebrated Good Friday and Easter. It is finished. Today in Christ, we have been brought to a place where we are positioned to bring all glory back to Him. Yeah, we have been positioned for that. Today we have been brought to a place in Christ where we can show the world who God is and what He can do. Today we have been connected to God to display His kingdom living in this dying world. Are we not the privileged group of people? because of Christ in us. How can the display of this glorious kingdom take place today and bring all glory back to God? How can that happen? It is true the transformation that takes place in our Probably you're hearing this phrase over and over again. It is through the transformation that takes place in our lives. That's what the world is going to see. That is what is going to preach the gospel. I always tell my church members, I'm not very keen on you in going and bringing the gospel to others. First, let there be change in your life. When you go and preach the gospel, that will be powerful. From Romans 12 onward, Paul is directing the believers, Christians, the Jews, the Gentiles, to pay attention to how they live as a community of faith. It's not about how the other, the world living or how you're treating the world, but then the focus is here, how you are supposed to live as a community of faith. Remember I told you, God is creating a family that the world cannot create. We are that family that God is creating. 
a community of faith which has encountered Christ and transformation should be paid attention to in it. The kind of transformation that displays the new creation life, the life that God has given to us that was birthed at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. New things. A new work of God that brings out the, the beauty from the ashes. Sometimes I paint a picture. You're like a beautiful garden. <laughs> Flowers. Maybe for my next time when I come, I'll speak about it. Fragrance. What kind of fragrance that we are giving? The world is taking in. What are they seeing? What are they smelling <laughs> from this garden? It's, it's important. It is in our transformation that we see the beauty of Christ coming out from those ashes. It's in that transformation. But my brothers and sisters, this is a process. We wish we can do a magic show. You come to Christ, you say a magic word, poof, you are changed. <laughs> you are a new creation. Everything is changed. We wish that can happen, but it's, it's, it doesn't work like that. All right? It's a process. First, we encounter the truth of the kingdom. Then, we get the conviction of the truth. We need to be convicted. Then, it is the practicing of the truth. Right? It is a process by which the Holy Spirit guides us through. And one example I can think, the, the process uh, for us to remember, a simple uh, uh, thing to remember is, transformation is not like uh, frying karapok. Yeah, we love to eat karapo, fried karapo, fish karapo, whatever it is. It's quite easy to cook. You heat up the oil, you get the karapo, put inside the oil, poof, ready to eat. Yeah, but I believe the transformation that takes place in our life is like us cooking a Chinese herbal soup. It takes time. You got to boil it for the flavor to come. And it will be a nice soup for us to enjoy. For Christians, if you have Christ in your life, transformation should take priority over us fulfilling our own fleshly desires. Where we surrender our lives to live a life that brings glory to God alone. We surrender our lives to behave ourselves. That needs to be some kind of decision made. <laughs> it doesn't like just happen like that. I don't know. If it just happened like that, maybe you come and talk to me later. I want to, you know, interview you. How that happened? Just poof. But there's a place where we got to make some conscious decision. This is what I want to do. All right? Surrendering our lives to behave ourselves in a way that we would bring glory to God. Right? It's, it's in, in every area, even with the way that God blessed us, right? blessings that we receive. We, we don't just do things whatever we like with it, but we are careful. We know it's from God. The way we spend, what we use the money for, we are careful. We want to use it for the glory of God. So in everything, even in ourselves, our lives, we want to be careful. It's not just about material things, but I think the more important thing is our life. We got to be very careful. Transformation. How we treat each other. This is a bit challenging. 
right, how we treat each other should bring glory to God. All right? This becomes a reality when transformation takes place in our lives, changes. Remember the calling of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say? He has called us to be the salt and light in this world. My, my Jesus say that? Did your Jesus say that? Yeah. Our Jesus say that. Be the salt and the light in this world. And transformation actually positions us for that purpose. Positions us. Matthew 5 16, Jesus said, Let your light shine, so shine before who? Before man, that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, the good work definition may be different in our mind, right? Good work, we think helping the poor, the needy. Yeah, it's part of it. But then, what is our life is producing that is also good work in the eyes of God. Let's remember this, my brothers and sisters. Transformation leads us towards godliness. The reality is this. Our bodies and minds are corrupted with things of the world. If you don't agree... We talk about it later, all right? And they surely need to be transformed. I need to be transformed. Many areas I see that I need to, I need changes, yeah? We cannot be deceived with the look, <laughs> right? I was this morning, I was telling the Members, right? My, my, my brother was known to be an angel in the school. But the teachers would tell my parents, Oh, your son is like an angel in the school. And we would be thinking in our heart, Yeah, I come to the house and see whether he's an angel or not. <laughs> yeah. When a harmless tea bag is put into the hot water, the true flavors will come out. Cold water, maybe, nowadays I heard Chinese tea also, you can put it in cold water and enjoy. Yeah, I just heard it a few, uh, last month. But the true flavor comes when you are, when the tea bags in the hot water. That's where people begin to see the true flavor. things that need to be changed in our lives. All right? Thank God my wife is here together with me today. She, she would have seen a lot of true flavors in my life <laughs> when I'm in the hot water. Yeah. But thank God for His mercy and grace. It is about us leaving our worldliness, our old world ways behind and moving towards. That's transformation, moving towards godliness. That's, why, that's how it's important. Moving towards godliness, God's way. All right? It affects the whole life, the way we run our business, do our work, the way we treat our family, the way we treat our neighbors, the way we react to the situations that come in our ways, Right? How we treat one another and, and so on. Verse 2, yeah, verse 12, uh, chapter 12 says, Do not be conformed to this world. Don't follow their ways on, in handling things. Do not follow the patterns of the world. Sometimes Paul have to say, Hey, why are you doing like the world? We have God. We have different way of settling things or doing things. Why are you following that way? You know, right? So it's, it's don't follow the patterns of the world. The question that I ask myself is how much of that patterns of the world 
can be traced in my life. <laughs> it comes out. All right? But I think we need brothers and sisters who can talk to you straight. <laughs> but we've we got to be humble, right? <laughs> For those kind of correction. Yeah. God is at work. He's building the church. He's supposed to hate somewhere. He's supposed to be there to glorify God. How much of the trace of the world we see when we are, when we are in a difficult situation, when we are dealing with people who are difficult, how much of that trace of the world manifests in our lives? Yeah. Romans 6, 4 says we should walk in the newness of life. Romans 6, 13, present your members as instruments of righteousness to God. <laughs> what we have. Because we have been made righteous through Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 1, 14, as obedient children, we are not to conform ourselves to the former lust as in our ignorance. Now we have become the obedient children of God. Change. And reading verse 2, we also see godliness being defined. What is that? What is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That's what will be seen in us. Right. We always talk about being conformed into the image of Christ. Romans 8, 29. And we love this phrase. We always say, may Christ increase and I increase some more. No, sorry. Decrease. Second Peter 3, 10, 12 also warns us of the day of the Lord. What kind of person we ought to be, right? To be in holy conduct and godliness. The future. So we, are, we come to Christ not just because of, I want to go to heaven, but a lot of things that God has planned. He has his intentions for us. So the question that we can ask ourselves this morning, this afternoon, in fact, how much attention are we giving to the transformation that needs to take place in our lives? Are we paying attention to that? Oh, everything is swept under the carpet. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. How sensitive are we to the convictions of the Holy Spirit when we encounter the truth from his living word. The word speaks to us if we read the word, yes. It speaks to us. Are we paying careful attention to those areas that God has unveiled to us, even through this passage here, all right, uh, especially in, in terms of, uh, in, 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 a, in, a, uh, in the community of faith? How much we have paid attention to, to the beauty that needs to be seen in our lives? What are the things that need to be seen? Now, why is this important? All right. First, transformation is about us responding to God's mercy. We are responding to His mercy. It is an outflow of what God has done for us. Right? Uh, there is a purpose. That's what God has done, yeah, his work for us. Uh, and uh, we are responding to that. We, re we respond to Jesus. We know that we are, as we respond to Jesus, we know that we are receiving God's mercy upon our lives. We obtain that mercy from him. We were disobedient people. We were doing what we like. We were going on our own ways. But we have been returned to him with faith in Christ. We know we receive that mercy. He forgive us, even though we did not deserve it. 
There's not much good work that we can say, I am good, Lord, please forgive me. Nothing. But it's pure mercy. He said, okay, I forgive you. That's it. It is the mercy of God that we have received and the mercies that we need every moment in our lives. That we are responding to it. Romans 9.23 reminds us we are vessels of mercy. <laughs> vessels of mercy. It is by the mercies of God that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. The mercies that we are receiving. That we are responding to it. And that we are dedicating ourselves to live a life that is worthy of that calling. We thank God that His mercies are New every morning. We love to sing. We love to say that, right? But then if it is new every morning, there's always this new commitment to the Lord. I'm living my life for you. I'm presenting my life to you because I'm responding to that mercy. Beauty emerges from the ashes. And we live our lives being grateful for that mercy. It can. Secondly, transformation is about us resolving to live a holy life before a holy God. Let's not forget that. It's very encouraging for us to know that He's our loving Father, loving God. But let's not forget He is our holy God. He is our holy God. And because he is holy, there are things, there are some things in the world that are not acceptable to him. It just does not match him. All right? We say things that are not good, not acceptable, not according to the, they are there in this world. And we are reminded, Romans 7, 23 to 25, the law of sin is working in my member. Who will deliver me? It is at work. We possess a body that is already programmed to sin. If it is like a computer, we can put new program inside. Just change the hard disk, is it? Can, huh? Oh, the, 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 put in the new program. But here the transformation is taking place slowly. God is at work. It is programmed to go against God because of the sinfulness. So with this sin-related reali reality existing in us, do we have clarity on what we are going to do with our bodies? Do we have the clarity? Do I know what I'm going to do with my body? Or is just going to do whatever it likes? Yeah? As I read this passage, I understand that we need to make our bodies stand before God all the time. It's not just one time, no. It's as if every day we are standing before God, as if. Right? There's no off day. <laughs> not only on Sunday I stand before God. No, all throughout the week I stand before God. Present our bodies as living sacrifice. Make ourselves to stand before God. Be holy for I am holy. That's what the Lord says. So with this knowledge about God, we are then called to be responsible for what we do with our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with our bodies, because it does not belong to us anymore. Everything belongs to Him. We are responsible. Living a holy life, life that is acceptable unto God. Another way we can just say, follow God's ways in everything. Let's remember this, my brothers and sisters. It is about a sacrifice at the altar. We Giving our bodies as a living sacrifice. It's a sacrifice and it is not a gift. 
We are not giving our bodies as a gift, nicely wrapped, you know. No, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice at the altar. Sacrifice, something that needs to be killed. Not easy. Something that, uh, an animal that needs to be sacrificed, it needs some force <laughs> to tie it down, all right? To submit, there is some struggle. Yeah, there is some struggles. Our minds will have a lot of other suggestions for us to do when we are facing difficulties. But we know what we are going to do with our body. That we will choose to follow God's ways. Submit to the ways of God. Romans 6, 12 to 13, we see, do not let sin Reign in your mortal bodies. Do not let it reign. Let it not take control. Then how are we to approach transformation? The scripture says we need to work on the renewal of our minds. We need to work on it. And when we talk about the renewal of our minds, we can't separate it from the word of God. Not the philosophy of man, stories of man, or whatever it is. We cannot separate it. It must always come back to the word of God. All scriptures are inspired. I hope and pray that all of us present here will be part of what the church is doing in terms of studying the word. Yeah, that is very important for us. Be part of it. And I, I see a very nice uh, plan has been worked out for all of you, right? Where, which level you are. You can continue to grow. So don't take that for granted. Be part of it. Yeah, in studying the Word of God. We need the Scriptures. Holy Spirit uses the Scriptures to convict us. There need to be this, this information. The Spirit can point, hey, this is what the Word of God is. If there's nothing, then how? Right? Yeah, so we must. And... Uh, so another question we can ask ourselves is how much time we are spending on those things that are getting us to conform to the world or how much time we are spending on those things that bring transformation to our mind. Transformation towards the world or towards God? How much time we are spending? Something that we need to search ourselves. Right, I was saying this morning, something that I need to check in my life is how much I spend my time, especially uh, handling uh, social media. It takes a lot of time, right? Yeah, once you get into it, it just goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. What is for you? Maybe Korean drama, I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, all these different dramas we have. I can't go for Bible study because I have to, you know, finish my next series. <laughs> yeah, well, what is that taking our time? Let's check ourselves, right? Because we are in Christ and He's working on something. He's creating something beautiful so that the world can see, hey, this is the change. This is something beautiful, right? Is it there? in our lives. So these are the platforms we have so that transformation can take place. And one more thing, all these things will take time. We need to take time as well. Right? It doesn't happen just instant like that. We need to spend time coming to church, spend time. Reading the Word, spend time. Bible study, spend time. Uh, spending time. Uh, meditation takes time. All these things take time. So there's no easy way out. I wish we can just open our minds and just 
like programming, you know, put some program, upload the Bible, or whatever it is done. No, it doesn't work like that. It takes chewing, and that's how God designed it to be, right? He wants to speak to us personally. That's the beauty, you know. He wants to speak to us personally. So it will, we got to spend some time. In conclusion, let's remember this, all of us here, because we have Christ in our lives. We have been plucked into God to shine. Yeah. Because our calling is to be the salt and light. We have been plucked into Christ to shine. So it's no way, no, we cannot say, I cannot do this and that. No, no, we have been plucked into that. It's just that we want to uh, get things right in our lives, focusing, all right, what needs to be changed in my life? What is God highlighting in my life that I need to change? What is this area that I keep on seeing coming up in my life that is not pleasing to God? I want to change, all right? We got to focus. The transformation that takes place in our lives helps us to shine. So we need to pay attention to the transformation that need to take place where God is currently at work. What is that God is working in your life now? All right. I don't know. As I mentioned this morning, God is at work in my life as well. Life is not always full of, bed full of roses. <laughs> it's not always hallelujah singing and praise God. No, we all go through difficulties. Challenging time. Especially dealing with difficult people. How many of you got difficult people in your life? <laughs> yeah. It's very painful. Very hard. It's it's breaking moment. <laughs> I said, Lord, seriously, you want me to do this? <laughs> it's not fair. Injustice. Seriously. <laughs> Very difficult. Lord. But in the end, we want him to win. <laughs> yeah, we can overcome. Our ways can be, things can be changed. All right? And that's, that, that's his plan, all right? That's his plan. So pay attention to the word and the spirit's conviction in our life. What God is speaking to you, even as you read. Or maybe through our friends, God may highlight, us, highlight some things, all right? That need to be changed, all right? So let's remember, a transformed life is an out outflow of God's mercy that we have received. It's coming out from that because we are so grateful to him. And in return, it brings glory back to God. Right? I hope uh, we may, I may have an opportunity next time or even in you, through your Bible studies that you can go through the details after chapter 12. What is that? Paul is highlighting there. What needs to be seen in the church? What needs to be manifested in the, in the household of faith? What, yeah, the, the qualities, the characters, how we treat one another. All these things can be uh, brought to light and be dealt with, all right? But one thing is for sure, when we are dealing with these issues, we got to be humble. We got to be humble. Maybe we got to be prepared to be humili humiliated as well. But transformation is taking place. And the name of God will be glorified. Amen? Yeah, that's what we desire, right? We always say, may the name of God be glorified. Yes. But then it's glorified when transformation takes place in our lives. So may the Lord bless us. All right? Uh, may we be that family that he is creating in this world. The world cannot create this. Right? The church, you see it. You talk about uh, Satu Malaysia or whatever it is. It's in the church. <laughs> yeah, how we live together. Yeah, how we work together. The world need to see that. The world cannot. It's very hard, very difficult. They see more fightings. 
war with the family of God here in the church. Let them see us and give glory to God. See, it works and it can work if we submit ourselves to his work you know, and to his word. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we are grateful for the salvation that has come to us. You saved us. Oh, you brought forgiveness of sin. And we know it's pure mercy, your mercy, O oh God. Nothing that we can claim that we have done good or we have so much things that we can say you forgive us because we have done this. Nothing, but Lord, it is your mercy. It is the finished work of Christ on the cross. So Father, help us true in whatever areas that you are highlighting, you're dealing with in our lives. You are, uh, you are speaking to us. You are highlighting us through different circumstances, situations. And we know this is something that needs to be dealt with, Lord. God, we need your grace to overcome it. Give us the strength that we will not give in to the patterns of the world, but Lord, to what you want us to do. Your ways will be our priority. So strengthen us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who is in us, who empowers us, gives us the strength to do what is right. Lord, may our lives bring glory and honor to your name alone. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Zado, for bringing God's word to us today. We continue our worship through our act of uh, giving, uh, offerings and tithes. If you're a visitor here, uh, please feel free uh, to pass the back along because we believe that uh, giving is a privilege of believers and the community of the church.
Almighty and most merciful God, from you comes every good and perfect gift. We give you praise and thanks for all your mercies. Your goodness has created us. Your bounty has sustained us. And so please accept these our offerings, a token of all you have trusted to us. May your will be done, O Lord. We pray for the wise usage and responsible stewardship in managing these resources you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now let us sing the doxology together. Praise God from Let us prepare our hearts as we come to the Lord's table this afternoon. This is what Apostle Paul reminded. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, Whoever eats this bread and drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Let us pray. Father, as we come to your table this afternoon, you are the one who searches our hearts. And we know that we cannot hide anything from you. So as we stand before you today, Lord, we confess of our sins. And we know, as we confess our sins, you are faithful to forgive us. We thank you for the forgiveness that has come to us. Thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross for us. Thank you for your body that was given to be, to be broken 
for us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we partake in this Holy Communion, Lord, we ask today, fill our hearts with your love. The love that we can love you and love one another. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we recite the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. We do not trust in our own righteousness, O God, but only in your mercy. It is your nature to have mercy. Grant us, O gracious Lord. As we partake of the bread and the cup to be renewed so that we will walk in newness of life and grow into your likeness and abide in you. As the branch abides in the vine, in the name of Jesus, Amen. This is the Lord's table. The Lord invites all who place their trust in him to come. Lord Jesus, on the night of which his arrest and trial, took bread and broke it and gave thanks to the Father, he said, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this to remember me. Draw near with faith and partake and be strengthened. Lord Jesus, on the night on which he was being delivered into the hands of his enemies, he took a loaf, he gave thanks, he broke it, and said, this means my body, which was broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. The blood that was shed so that the sins of many might be forgiven. So drink of this in remembrance of me. This afternoon, we'd like to invite all those who have been baptized or have you, you have gone through your confirmation in this church or another church to rise and partake in this Holy Communion. I'd like to invite the officers to come and assist with the distribution of the elements. Mm -hmm.
let's prepare ourselves to partake of the bread together. This is the body of Christ, which was broken for you and me. Let's eat of this in remembrance of Jesus with a grateful heart. Let's eat. Take of the cup together. This cup is the new covenant sealed by Christ's blood. The blood that was shed so that the sins of many might be forgiven. Let's drink of this with a grateful heart, remembering Jesus. Let's drink. as we stand before you for taking in this holy communion we remember our brothers and sisters who are not with us this day Lord some of them not able to come because probably they are in the senior homes not well we bring them all before you father Some are in a lonely place, need your touch. Some are discouraged, need to hear encouraging words. Some need love, need to receive love. So here we are, O oh God, as people who have experienced your love, your touch. Guide us that we may be a blessing to them as well. May they receive your love, receive your touch, receive your blessings. Father, we also remember those who are traveling during this holiday season. Lord, we ask for your protection. Watch over them. We pray for alertness of mind as they drive. Lord, we pray for safe journey. Thank you, Father. Lord, we continue to pray for the church, the leadership of the church. We bring each and every one of them before you. Continue to grant them wisdom with the fear of God and humility that they will continue to serve you. And let the world see that this family is your family, a different family and bring you all glory. So Father, I commit this church into your hands. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's receive the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. As the service draws to a close, we invite uh, those who require prayer to just remain uh, in your seats after the postlude, and uh, either a pastor or an elder will come and pray with you. For those who are watching online, if you require prayer, you can contact us through the church website. Please send in your prayer request, and we will keep uh, you in prayer as well.
And now let us receive the dismissal together. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord with gladness. We go in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's who I am. It's who.